I and I somehow I, I gave up my hosting privileges. Uh, can you also make me a co-host? Yeah, but that works. Okay, there. Cool. You're all set. Thanks. Thanks. Welcome everyone. So this is be this will be an one hour and a half long about Wikisource. Um, I'm Nicolas Vigneron. I'm from, from France, from Brittany, more exactly in west of France. I will start with a quick um, overview presentation of Wikisource if you don't know it yet. Uh, then we have a bunch of fantastic people who will talk about uh, many specific cool projects. And we'll, we'll finish this session with uh, Antoine Azadas, who will uh, do um, uh, a quick workshop, uh, first step on how to edit Wikisource. Um, so you will become a Wikisourcer too. Enjoy. Um, so what is Wikisource? We talked about it uh, already. Jon uh, mentioned it yesterday at several points. Um, basically, this is a online library. It's collaborative because it's a wiki, and it's probably the la one of the largest online collaborative library uh, in the world. Yay, Wikisource. Um, so Wikipedia started in 2001, and Wikisource started just two years after in 2003. So it's already a, quite an old project. And at the beginning, the idea was to transcribe primary sources because for instance, at the beginning of Wikipedia, they put all of Romeo and Juliet text inside the article, and obviously it doesn't belong there. So that's why one of the reasons why Wikisource was created. Um, and Wikipedia is producing new texts, while Wikisource is just transcribing existing texts, which is a different way of working workflow and also has advantages. So some uh, Numbers, where is Wikisource now? There's right now 70, 70 yes, language, languages uh, with, with an independent Wikisource, like the French Wikisource, the Breton Wikisource, the Napolitan Wikisource, Hindi, Bengali, and so on and so on. And there's a lot more in incubation, um, more than 100. Uh, some are very small yet with very few languages, uh, texts in these languages. Some are very big. Um, for instance, the Balinese Wikisource, we'll talk about it later, uh, is starting to be very dynamic and big enough to get its own project very soon, I hope, finger crossed. Uh, all together, all these languages uh, have a bit less of 5 million texts, which is, as I said, one of the largest library. Um, by text, we mean very different thing because it can be just a short poem or even an haiku of few words or a very long text. Uh, it can be literary text or non-fictional text. There's a lot of magazine review documents, whatever you can imagine to transcribe. Um, and for the whole community, there's a bit less of 3,000 um, active editor by active editor women uh, who did at least one edit in the last month. So what is Wikisource, as I said, is a digital library. It's online. Um, it's uh, in the same spirit of Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects. It's collaborative, open, under a free license or public domain. It's even better for Wikisource. And uh, we are doing task uh, as I said, by micro-tasking, uh, page by page, doing transcription of books, uh, small bit by bit, and together the power of the community make it available to reach 5 million texts. And as we'll uh, Antoine show during the workshop, there's a proofread expansion who allows to um, make it more easier to, to transcribe and to do page by page side by side of the image of the text and the scan and the text transcribed uh, as plain text. Um, as I said, the content is freely available. Uh, we talked about it uh, yesterday and this morning also, how it's important to be able to share and disseminate uh, this text and 
the free license allow to do that. Uh, on Wikisource, most of the texts are in the public domain because they are old enough uh, to be in the public domain. Some are new your texts on uh, free license uh, CC by SA or equivalent. Um, but the downside of this is that we it's not possible or it's more difficult to have a recent text. And for some languages uh, who are modern orthography or new orthography, who are less than a century, it can be a bit complicated for, for this language to be on Wikisource. You have to ask the author of the text or the editor or publisher sometime uh, to put it under a free license. It's, it has been done, it's possible, but it's more complicated. Um, uh, that's it for the license, which is just the legal, uh, legal framework. Um, I will close this short presentation with uh, sharing some very cool projects. So Balinese, we will talk about it later, uh, but that's a very good project um, of manus palm leaf manuscripts. That's wonderful. Um, in French, we have um, related to feminism, we have a cool project for three or five years now, maybe, which is called Georges Le Deuxième Text in French. So it's George the Second Text, which aims to proofread books about a female author. Because when you talked about old classical text, uh, you think about Shakespeare very quickly in English, for instance. But at the same period, very often there was less known female author that need to be uh, shed some light on um, because they're equally interesting. I think uh, some people know Frankenstein, for instance, which has been out uh, bought, uh, right by a woman. And um, so this, um, this project, Georges Le Deuxième Text, is aiming to to, to do it and they are doing it with um, education on uh, schools to be used in the in the cursus of a book um, that are studied or anything in school. So that's a very cool project. Um, and there was also a lot of partnerships with library and archives. Uh, some a long time ago, for instance, the National Library of France in 2008 which gave uh, more than uh, almost two 2,000 books. Um, that was very interesting. That was the first, the first time that uh, National Library was interesting in Wikisource and see how the community can uh, achieve a good quality of uh, transcription um, in a wiki way. And uh, more recently, uh, the National Library of Scotland did uh, last year during the pandemic a very interesting project uh, on chap books, which are short books, uh, which is very interesting also. And then it was very successful because everybody was in lockdown during pandemic. So all of the people of the library made uh, it available online and it, uh, it gave a, a new and better dynamic. Um, that's it for me. And I will let other people uh, introduce themselves first and talk about their projects. Um, to you, Sadip, first, maybe? Thank you, Nicola. Can you? Uh, okay. Yes. Yep. Um, Am I, as, is my screen visible? No, um, someone paused. Okay, let me just do it again. Um, okay. So just let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, go on. Okay. So, so today we, we, we're going to talk about uh, two communities and two interesting case studies of how Wikisource is helping in digitizing rare texts. So we have Karma Chakravati and Gita Purnama from the Balinese community. Karma is a, uh, is a writer in Balinese and Gita is a lecturer at the university, Urtian University. And they're gonna talk about um, their project, the Balinese manuscripts and how the Balinese manuscripts made their way to um, Wikisource and now it's about to be 
a new standalone wiki source project. And uh, next we have Bodhi Sattva, he's an Indian Wikimedia and a friend, uh, dear friend of mine as well. And he's gonna talk about their collaboration, um, Bengali community's collaboration with the British Library uh, to bring some of the, the rare texts uh, from their collection online. So, let me just check which mic is. John's mic is on, let me mute John. Okay. So, yeah, um, Wikisource, I believe is, you know, is the essential infrastructure for, for some of the languages, at least, if not for all the languages, um, because it's, uh, you know, we don't have source text available for, for our language. If we don't have them, we won't be able to write or create other knowledge on top of them. And Wikisource is the only project um, which which serves more than um, 60 or 68 languages and or 70 languages. There are similar projects, uh, Project Gutenberg, which only has 16 languages, one six, 16 languages with more than 50 texts on their project. So for for my language, for instance, for Punjabi language, the only place where I can go and find uh, texts that I can read on my Kindle or my e-readers is Wikisource. So it's just becomes a really important project for, um, especially for some of the languages uh, in, in the underrepresented regions. So now I'm gonna um, give the floor to the Polynesian community over to you, uh, Karma, Chitravati, and Dita. Uh, feel free to unmute your mic and start presenting us. Uh, okay, thank you, Sadda, for uh, the time and the opportunity to ask from Balinese uh, Wikipedia to present our project. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. In this session, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am uh, Gita Purnama, or you can call me Bayu. I am one of the members of Balinese uh, Wikipedia. And I also work as a lecturer uh, in the Udayana University at Balinese Language Department. So in this talk, I would like to uh, concentrate on Balinese manuscript in Bali. In my presentation, I will focus on two major issues. Uh, the first, I will give you a brief information about uh, what is Balinese manuscript, and last, how the condition of uh, Balinese manuscript in Bali. So uh, let, me, let me start uh, with some general information on Balinese manuscript. Uh, that the slide okay uh in the slide in the top of slide uh, this is the balinese traditional manuscript or we call it lontar uh, bali is one of the region uh, in indonesia that has the largest collection of manuscript lontar in bali are kept at uh, various places not only in government institution, but also in people houses. Uh, based on our data, there are about uh, 25,000 Lontar collection spread out in people houses and about 8,000 Lontar in government institution. Uh, as you can see on slide, this is a Lontar. Uh, so this Lontar is a uh, traditional uh, manuscript, which is uh, written by a traditional uh, knife called Pangrupa. So we have a specific uh, writing tools for this uh, manuscript. And it written in Balinese script. So Lontar uh, contain a lot of uh, our local knowledge, such as uh, traditional medicine, farming pr procedures, worship, literatures, and others. Uh, then I'll move to the condition of Lontar. 
if we talk about the collection of government institutions such as uh, museum and libraries, their collection is well maintained because they know how to preserve the, the lontar. But uh, our attention was the lontar in people's houses. You can see the condition on this slide, on the right slide. Uh, many lontars in people's houses have been bad condition. There are several factors that causes these lontars to be damaged. Uh, first, they are seldom read lontar because uh, you know Balinese considered lontar is sacred. So it means uh, not everyone or not Balinese can read it easily. Second one, the owner of lontar have less knowledge to preserve their lontar. And lastly, uh, there are poor uh, weather and storage of the lontar. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so in this slide, uh, as you can see, I and uh, my uh, community, Balinese Wikipedia, started to move together to save the Lontar. So uh, this is our activities that we are doing to help to preserve the Lontar. Uh, what we do, like uh, collecting the data, digitize Lontar, making catalog, making transcription, and also making translation because uh, Lontar is uh, using Balinese and old Javanese language. So not all Balinese understand. Uh, even we are Balinese, we don't uh, understand the, 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 the language because this is uh, old Balinese language and old Javanese language. Uh, okay, uh, I think next slide, please. Okay. So this is the uh, our project, Wiki Pustaka project, and uh, how this is this Wiki Pustaka and our experience will be present by Titra. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Bayu. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Citra. Uh, I'd like to talk to you uh, about uh, our experience on Balinese Wiki Source, uh, known as uh, Wiki Pustaka. Uh, as Bayu said earlier, in the Balinese uh, Wikipedia community, we have a lot of uh, activities like uh, make a, a Balinese uh, article and then uh, collecting data for um, uh, for uh, Balinese dictionary and also uh, we help Balinese people who have a lontar uh, to preserve their uh, collection, uh, their manuscript. Uh, first, I'd like to give you some background information about uh, Wiki Pustaka. Uh, in the top of the slide, you can see uh, this is the main page of uh, Wiki Pustaka. Uh, Wiki Pustaka is a free online uh, library that kept uh, many uh, collections such as a uh, lontar. Uh, now, uh, there are 3,000 uh, collection on uh, Wiki Pustaka. Uh, we can obtain in the, uh, uh, the collection uh, because of a collaboration uh, between uh, Balinese Wikipedia community and then uh, panlec.org and also uh, support uh, from uh, Wikipedia Foundation. Uh, on Wiki Pustaka, uh, not only lontar image that we have, uh, but also uh, auto translation in Latin and uh, Balinese script. Uh, on the slide in uh, image uh, below, uh, you can see uh, one of the lontar that have been done to proofread. Uh, the title of lontar is uh, Usadarare. Uh, Usadarare is one of uh, genre in lontar uh, about uh, traditional medicine for a child. Uh, uh, I think uh, you can see in, uh, in uh, the image, uh, auto translation uh, in the bottom and uh, the uh, image in the right side uh, and uh, the Balinese script in the top. Uh, uh, the auto translation uh, have used the translation system uh, from uh, Purikauhan Ubud, uh, one of popular and famous uh, translation system and uh, uh, Panlek uh, uh, translation system and also Dharma project system. Uh, you can uh, uh, choose one of the system translation and uh, really amazing uh, for us uh, and also for researchers uh, who, uh, apa, uh, who uh, focus on uh, uh, manuscript. Uh, last year's 
uh, we got a wiki site uh, grant, uh, uh, namely wiki lontar. Uh, we have collected uh, 600 lontar from people houses and make uh, making catalogs. Uh, we try to look uh, for the owner of the lontar who are willing to open their collection. Uh, there are a lot of steps of this project. Uh, the first, uh, I and uh, our community try to communicate uh, with a Balinese language educator uh, to help us and look for a few places that may uh, give permission to open their collection. Uh, and then I visited uh, people houses and talked clearly about the purpose of this project, uh, even though uh, not all Lontar owners uh, agree about this, uh, uh, agree to open uh, their collection. Uh, but I think it, uh, this is uh, doesn't matter for me. Uh, and finally, uh, we have permission to collect the data from uh, six places uh, in three region in Bali. Uh, at, the, uh, at the people houses, uh, we distribute uh, the workload to our member um, to make uh, this, pro uh, this project uh, successful. Uh, they were started to clean the lawn tar uh, leaf by leaf. In the same time, uh, another team uh, classified and input parameter on the form, and uh, uh, another uh, digitized the lontar. Uh, we just digitized the first page and the last page of the lontar uh, because uh, we got permission uh, to digitize only this uh, page. Uh, in uh, one place, uh, we spent three and of uh, until four days uh, just to do preservation. Uh, collecting data and digitize. Uh, after all of the work had been done, uh, we input parameter on Wikidata and the image uh, of the lontar uh, uploaded on Wiki Commons. Uh, and uh, so uh, we we are ready to uh, retype and appropriate them on uh, Wikisort. Lastly, uh, we have finished making catalog lontar and everyone can be access it. Uh, I think that's all I have to say about our experience on Wikisource. Uh, if you are interested in this project for further more information about Wikilontar, can be accessed and in the chat. I think uh, uh, is in the chat, and uh, you can contact me directly if we can discuss uh, further more about this. Uh, if you have any question, I'm happy to answer. Thank you very much, Adep. Thank you so much, Bayu and Chitra. This is really inspiring work. And yeah, we'll have, we'll have some conversation and some questions in the end. And uh, right now, I'll I'll move to the next presentation. Over to you, Bodhi. Um, hello. Uh, thank you, Sadiq, uh, for inviting me to this uh, uh, to this event and to be part of this panel. Uh, first of all, thank you, Karma and Gita. You are doing amazing job, and it is really inspiring. Um, so uh, let's let's move ahead. Uh, 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 we um, we are, I am from uh, Bengali Wiki Source community. I am uh, a Wikimedia volunteer for last nine years, more than nine years maybe. Um, I'm mostly active on Bengali Wiki Source and Wiki Data. Um, I'm from India. My name is Purushottam, and. Uh, for last uh, uh, one, almost one year, we are collaborating with British Library. Uh, and there are Did only I lose uh, both your everyone did? Everyone, I share. OK, I think I, I see. I think there must be an electricity thing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey Bodhi, you're back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Continue. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, for last uh, one year, almost one year, we are having a collaboration with British Library. Uh, there is a project uh, going on in British Library and two centuries of Indian tree. Um, so they are actually they are digitizing uh, books which are uh, published uh, in British India. Um, under the colonial rule uh, during the uh, early 19th century and uh, uh, during the 19th century and early 20th century. Uh, so for the current uh, focus of this project is Bengali. So uh, Bengali language, which uh, the books which were published in uh, Kolkata, uh, which is the capital city of 
the state of west bengal which is a state in india um so uh, two centuries of indian print project uh, digital curators contacted us uh, and they wanted us to uh, have their book transcripted and proofread uh, uh, on wiki source uh, so um, after that uh, we had some collaboration uh, they they started uh, uploading some of their books and uh, we then had a proofread competition in march it was one month long proofread competition um, um so they had almost uh, 1500 plus bengali pd books and uh, only around 50 or 60 books are now has been uploaded um, so we have plans for uh, at least three or four proofread uh, competitions uh, uh, within july 2021 uh, when their project will be ended actually so the first proofread competition was on march um and the next one will be on from september to november three months long to see competition um so so most of their books are uh, are from wide variety of topics uh, they have books uh, religious books um books which are uh, which were published or uh, written by british missionaries when they were trying to uh, spread christianity in india uh, there were some books uh, on science medicine uh, history and all those things um and, and also there are some uh, fictional fiction uh, uh, literature um uh, so um these are the books uh, uh, like the book so the book Uh, so this was one of the competition which was happened in march uh, we had around 30 books for the uh, competition and around 2600 pages were submitted um yeah how the your, your your voice is a bit low can you like uh, can you hear me now yes now it's with a bit of a static but we can hear you better Okay. Uh, can you, yeah, because I have an internet connection problem. Yes. So, n- yeah. Now we are hear- hearing you pretty well. Can you just like uh, briefly just yeah. share the final the final bits? Yeah. Sorry, which one? And I'm I'm saying just briefly share the final bits like uh, th- this oh, event. Okay. Yeah. Some people might have uh, missed okay. it, right? Uh, so yeah. So this event was conducted in uh, uh, March uh, 2021. Uh, it was a one month long event and around. 27 books were um, given to the participants uh, so that they can proofread, and um, around 2,600 pages were proofread. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. So um, at the time, so after this competition, uh, British uh, we uh, we and British Library both collaborated. Uh, we mean West Bengal Regional Library is a group which was. Uh, collaborating with British Library, uh, West Bengal Wikimedia and Research Group, and British Library uh, sent uh, prizes to the five winners, top five winners, and um, yeah. Uh, so after uh, after the competition ended, we are planning for three more uh, to competitions so that these groups can get to the certification. Amazing, amazing, it's really, really nice. So. I'll I'll come to the first um, uh, firstly to you only Bodhi um, like you've yeah. uh, you know since you've collaborated with a with an organization as big as British Library like what the what has been the major learning or or what have been some of the challenges um, of working with them um, in your experience. Uh, so uh, uh, what we faced that. uh british library had very high quality scan uh, i mean they had uh, if the book is around 30 pages or 40 pages it goes easily above 120 mb or something and if you can imagine what will happen after when a book is around 500 pages or more so uh, 
they had when they started uploading the books on wikimedia commons they had pretty uh, they faced pretty difficulty in uploading those so high uh, i mean those large size files uh, so and so that was one of the challenges which were which they were facing they were using patty pan and uh, we tried to uh, use uh, junk upload and all those uh, other tools but sometimes they were stuck and right now in bengali wiki source we are uh, we are trying to put every metadata on uh, wiki data book of every edition of which we have in bengali wiki source we are trying to put all the metadata on wiki data and trying to connect uh, those meta uh, those uh, items with bengali wiki source and wikimedia commons we are trying to fetch those data directly from wiki data so uh, i think uh, we are having uh, we are missing a, a tool uh, an integrated upload tool for books which are which, which is much needed for uploading books only where uh, one where we can put the metadata we can add the metadata and it will directly go mm -hmm. to the wikidata part and the book will be uploaded on wikimedia commons and eventually the index page will be created on wikipedia so i think this think this one robust upload tool is uh, much needed right now uh, maybe maybe we can work together better on this i don't know sometimes really maybe. yeah really really nice challenge and yeah uh, those are uh, the challenges you mentioned yeah i'm i'm imagining for an external organization to come and face them and then they must be thinking where are we and like what <laughs> like this is this is supposed to be you know one of the top um uh, uh websites in a way like we 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 need to upgrade our technology that's that's pretty much the right thing so yeah let's see if we can do something about it so i'll come to um chitra and bayu now and uh, you know you can also share uh, you, you you shared the challenge of um, you know people not giving permission uh, for sharing uh, you know for, for for you to scan their works so yeah can you just share some of the other challenges and also i may, i i i heard you saying that you were scanning only the first and the last page of the manuscript can you just uh, elaborate a bit on that why not the entire manuscript uh, and like what are we achieving uh, if we just um, you know scanning only the first two pages the first the first and the last pages uh, how useful that is for the community so can you just share a bit about that Uh, okay, uh, I, uh, I I'd like to uh, elaborate again about uh, why we just uh, um, digitize uh, the first page and uh, the last page because um, um, this is the challenges for for us uh, in uh, our community to uh, to digitize the lontar uh, the the knowledge uh, the the apa the uh, comprehension uh, the Balinese comprehension about. Uh, digitize is a, a rare uh, to to do digitize for a manuscript um uh, it's difficult to 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 us to uh, to convince uh, the the owner of lontar to to open their manuscript so uh, we have uh, uh, we get the permission to do uh, just uh, digitize uh, the first uh, page and the last page um, another page uh, we can do uh, the uh, digitize because uh, they have uh, they believe uh, lontar is care uh, is a uh, uh, is secret so uh, it's uh, not uh, everyone uh, can uh, read the lontar uh, even though uh, the balinese people so uh, i think that's a uh, um, uh, make uh, us to uh, difficult uh, to, to to convince the the uh, people uh, the owner of the lontar to uh, digitize all of the part in uh, the lontar uh, so uh, i can uh, make a uh, uh, I try to uh, make a, a, a movement with my uh, community to uh, to to do something uh, to do uh, to make uh, uh, apa, explain about uh, a wiki pustaka is a uh, uh, wiki pustaka or wiki source is a safe place for manuscript. I think it's uh, uh, have to do uh, slowly. Uh, how about you, Bayu? Yeah, uh, as Citra said. Uh... Lontar is a sacred 
things for uh, Balinese. So it's really difficult to make sure or to uh, convince the, the owner. Uh, the other uh, challenge for us, because this is uh, the first project for uh, Lontar, uh, digitize Lontar and upload it uh, into uh, digital uh, data, digital data. This is a uh, first project also for uh, our community. So uh, we learn a lot of things, how to manage uh, digital data for uh, this Lontar, how to upload, how to proofread the, the Lontar. And uh, we, hard, uh, we learn so hard uh, in very limited uh, time of this project. As you know, we read about um, 600, yeah. more than 600 uh, <laughs> lontar, which is uh, one lontar, um, mostly more than uh, 20 pages. So we have to read all the page by page and um, make the data. So this is a very uh, hard work, um, hard work uh, to, to to small make, community, yeah. yeah, for us, for a small community. Uh, just for information, uh, we only uh, 12 volunteers in this uh, Balinese Wikipedia work for this big project. So, uh, yeah, this is a very uh, good uh, uh, what is it? Uh, achievement, achievement for us. For us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Zadeb. Yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing that experience and also sharing the more context around why it's difficult um, to, you know, yeah, ask people to open up their um, long towers completely. And, and for now, so that so that I'm now I have more of an understanding that the project was more around collecting the metadata and, you know, understanding how many long towers are there around uh, and like which sometime hopefully in the in the future you know we can convince people and get them hopefully you know completely digitize them but it's good that at, at that level it was more around collecting the metadata that's um a really commendable work that uh, you've been doing and a bit of context for others uh, there is no ocr for balinese language so the the text the handwritten text it has to be typed by hand by the by the volunteers so then you can just imagine how um how difficult it is with a team of only uh, 12 volunteers as they said so this is really intense really um commendable work that they're doing and and and, and maybe um you know we need to we need to think about uh, how, how we can support it how in the future maybe you know an ocr can be developed where it's more about just correction which will which will you uh, you learn more when we we do a workshop on wiki source and i'll come to bodhi again and you know since we're talking about ocr bodhi can you share a bit of the journey about bengali wiki source and you know the time when there was no ocr no optical character recognition and and what's the situation like today i really want to forget those days because uh in 2000, I think in 2015, we had no OCR. After, after 2015, uh, Google introduced OCR for Bengali. Uh, so before that, we had no OCR and we had only two volunteers. Um, two or, uh, I think, yeah, three or four volunteers uh, in 2015 who were working on Bengali resource and we were just typing the text and that was really tedious work. Um, and after like, five or six months we just completed one book one novel <laughs> it was total i i thought it was total waste of time and i just left wikisource i, I didn't want to come back on wikisource at that time until any gosier uh, service was ready for us uh, so i i just want to forget those days please don't <laughs> tell me to share those things that was one of the bad times for wikisource how is the situation right now like the current ocr um engines that we have like how are those working like how's the quality and all can you share shed a bit of light on that uh, currently it is uh, currently it is great uh, so in 2016 uh, google introduced uh, 
OCR for so many languages, including Bengali. We were fortunate that Bengali was in the list. I, I, I remember that Punjabi was not in the list, pure language, Sadiq. Uh, so it was giving some Chinese uh, output in Punjabi. Uh, so uh, Bengali was in the list. And in 2015, August, as soon as the OCR service came, we started to test it for Wikisource. We started one project. Uh, we created one team of five or six volunteers uh, from different language communities of India. And we, we uh, tried to integrate that OCR into Wikisource. There was a, there was a huge debate um, because Google OCR is a proprietary software and open source communities are always uh, uh, not very fond of proprietary software, especially Google. But uh, we had no other option, so we stuck to that uh, OCR and we eventually integrated uh, there was our one of our developer Srinivasan from Tamil Wikisource community, uh, community he uh, developed a, a, a Python script which can mass OCR books because we had to catch up with the other languages like English and French because we, we, we are starting from zero and they were already gone so much far. Uh, so we had to create a mass OCR uh, uh, tool for that. And after that, Wikimedia Foundation community tech team uh, got into action. And they, in, I think in 2000, from 2016 or 17, they got into action and created some cool but buttons for OCR. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing uh, that, uh, Bodhi. We have a question, please. Yes, I, I have a question um, to, to Bodhi. Uh, at slightly more now than 1,000 books, do you still feel enthusiastic about adding the next book? Or do you see, uh, it, it, will the next book that you digitize attract more attention? Or is there a saturation in, in uh, because this is what I see in, in Swedish, where there are already many tens of thousand books digitized. And if I digitize one more book, people are not really interested anymore. It's, it's like they think everything is already digitized and I don't have to care about this. It, it was different a few years ago. How do you see this? So, uh... Um, in, in Bengali, we, we have a different kind of situation, uh, not only in Bengali, uh, in India, maybe in uh, Asia, most of the countries in Asia, uh, most of our literature are not digitized. Uh, even though we are, uh, we are saying that we have 12,000 books uh, ready to be uploaded on Wikimedia Commons uh, uh, for Bengali, and maybe many more books for other languages uh, still uh, it is just the tip of iceberg we are, most of the uh, books are not digitized till now uh, we have thousands and I, I mean millions i think if i'm not wrong of manuscripts in different languages of india they are not digitized they are somewhere in some collection or in some archive in physical form so and we have started our journey very late to uh, digitize those things. So I think uh, 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 it's kind of different from other uh, European languages and uh, uh, French and uh, English or other languages which already have so much resources. We don't have that much resources. Our uh, Sometimes our transcription is the only transcription available in the internet. Uh, and that means uh, a very, very huge thing for us because we can't stop our uh, work right now or we can't uh, have the, I mean, luxury to think that uh, let's do it now and just uh, leave it for the future. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe we have, we have, we have completely different scenario here. 
I mean, Sadip can talk about it better. He's from the yeah. foundation, so. <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, I completely agree with that. For my own language, when we were for Punjabi, uh, when we were trying to create Punjabi wiki source, there were only eight uh, PDFs or digitized books on internet archive. So for our community, it was more around going in, it was more about going into the libraries and bringing the books. So similar to what um, uh, our, our friends in Indonesia are doing with manuscripts. And I have uh, one, one last question for, um, for Chitra and Bayou, by the way. So, uh, you know, you have done this amazing work um, in, with Valenis Wikisource, and it's going to be a new project really soon. And, you know, what are your future plans about, about it? What are you thinking? What, what are you going to do next? Um, I think I have um, a, a big dream uh, in our community to make a, a collecting data the the the, op, the source uh, data in Wikipedia for our manuscript and uh, we collecting all of data manuscript in uh, Wikipedia actually on Wikisource and also in another like a Wikidata or uh, in Wikicommons. So uh, the future generation of Balinese uh, who uh, who uh, have uh, this uh, manuscript uh, can uh, have, uh, can, uh, have uh, uh, something uh, like uh, data uh, digital for in the future. Uh, uh, I think it's a big uh, dream, a dream, but uh, we can do uh, uh, in our community uh, and uh, keep uh, keep uh, going uh, one by one places in the Balinese and uh, convince the uh, owner of manuscript uh, to make uh, uh, data digital in uh, uh, Wikisource. I think uh, that's our future plan in uh, Wikipedia. Okay, how about by you? Um, yeah. Uh, from this project, actually, we learn how to manage the uh, data of our manuscript. So we we integrate the data for all uh, spread manuscript in people houses. Uh, the most important of this project, I think, for the researchers who interest us. Uh, uh, in uh, research in Valley Tontan because uh, as my experience as a researcher, we are very difficult to find um, the Lontar, where is the Lontar, where the people houses keep the Lontar. So from this project, we have integrated data, where's the Lontar position, who mm -hmm. kept the Lontar, and yeah, of course, this in the future, we hope we can uh, add more data, uh, long tars data from people houses, so it can be easy for researchers to uh, to find the data for their research. I think that's brilliant. Thank you so much for, for sharing uh, your future plan and the big dream. And I we, we might have more questions, but I think we can take them at the end. I'll, I would like to now pass on to Antoine for the workshop. Sure. So uh, if you can hear me, uh, I'll share my screen uh, with some slides. And I hope we're going to have some time to work on the workshop. Um, screen one. Tell me if you can see my screen. Yes. That's good. Yes, so we're starting the workshop part uh, on Wikisource. So I'll have a quick introduction of some concept. And of course, the main part will be a demonstration and uh, actually hands-on experience on Wikisource so that you can actually feel um, uh, the experience that um, the people who talked earlier uh, had when they worked on Wikisource. And then at the end, we'll have uh, a short opening on uh, follow-up actions that you can do after this workshop. So the first concept, of course, it's how to access Wikisource. Uh, there's multi multiple languages hosted on Wikisource. There's one uh, link, main link, which is wikisource.org. And if you click on the link, it will bring you to this page where you have a project with their own website, like French uh, Wikisource or uh, Polish Wikisource. 
uh, they have their own website. And there's also a lang uh, multiple languages that, languages that are hosted on uh, wikisource.org, such as, of course, uh, the Balinese uh, wikisource here. And you have yeah, many other languages uh, represented here. Um, then you, uh, now that we have seen how to access Wikisource, we can uh, browse the content. Uh, so I've selected, of course, uh, some works, uh, interesting works. Uh, of course, big, bigger Wikisource organize the content using categories. And in the category language, of course, you have many linguistic resources. Um, maybe you can have a look at work by languages. And you can see that you have a bilingual publication and uh, a book about uh, Bengali languages, Bengali language uh, from uh, 1818, which has been finished. And you can see that indeed it's uh, a bilingual text. And even if you click here, you can see that, yeah, it comes from a book, uh, the scan of the book where you have uh, Bengali pages and then uh, English pages. Uh, I could also show you uh, dictionaries uh, that we have on Wikisource. Um, you have, for example, this dictionary from uh, Swathao dialect. So it's a language from southern part of China. So the book has been, of course, uh, the dictionary has been compiled by a missionary in 1883. And yeah, the, the aim of Wikisource is to make a usable ver version of the text from uh, scan. Uh, and you also have, uh, because we talked about manuscript earlier, you also have a dictionary, a manuscript dictionaries like this one. And you can see that there's no uh, OCR layer, so no text layer. And uh, indeed, as some people said earlier, you can use uh, OCR tools to actually get um, some first draft of the content. Um, what? Yeah, so the, yeah, it includes um, linguistics resources, but also um, document about history. For example, this one, which is about the, uh, the Sikh uh, history in Punjab. And uh, now that we have browsed a bit Wikisource and uh, I've showed you some of the pages, uh, of course, you must understand that on Wikisource, um, each work uploaded uh, goes through multiple steps that uh, uh, some people already know here. So of course the work has to be uploaded to Commons, which hosts the, the document and the, um, the, the scan itself. Then you have the list of all pages on the indexed page, uh, such as this one. So each number is linked to a page. And if you click on it, it brings you to the page works namespace. And here you can actually work on the content itself and yes, yeah, save your work uh, when you finished. And once uh, every page uh, is finished, you can actually uh, publish the completed work, such like this one. And you can see that, yeah, you can reuse this. You can uh, look into it uh, using uh, Control F. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, usable and uh, uh, you can. Uh, regarding the working uh, steps uh, from the, the empty page, to the validated page. Of course, there's multiple steps. Uh, first, you uh, use the OCR layer to actually get some text as a tool uh, in your language. And then you work on it so that you proofread it once yourself. So you finished the proofreading of the page. Uh, so it's the status marked as uh, in yellow. And then after it's been proofread twice by another person, it gets to the green state validated. So, uh, of course, there's multiple principle on Wikisource. Um, the idea being that um, you shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes because there's mo multiple templates for the format that maybe you don't know. So try and experiment with them, with those uh, templates. Uh, you can check existing work to actually learn from others, um, especially uh, check existing works and projects uh, from other languages edition um, and use talk page to help each other. So help, uh, ask for help and um, uh, help other people. So each page has a discussion page. Uh, and there's also a, usually a central discussion page where people can ask for help. So I'll show you that uh, just after. 
I think we finished the theoretical ses uh, set part of this uh, demonstration. Now we'll go, uh, um, we'll work on this French Breton document. So everyone's gonna uh, work on this document. Uh, so I'll show you how we're gonna do it. And then uh, you'll have uh, some time to work on one page so that you can yeah, experience this. So this work is a French Breton um, handbook. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna uh, go to this index page. We're gonna pick uh, a page, uh, for example, uh, 91. Uh, we're gonna use the, the author pad to actually write out this page number so that we work on different pages. I'm gonna use my name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna work on it. So uh, basically uh, it's a text on the right. And you have to make sure that the text on the left, uh, well, correspond. So for example, 90, there's two spaces. Then there's this first line. Um, you see that there's some uh, special characters. Uh, I've picked this one because there's not that many special characters, but if you need any, there's a toolbar with it, with them. So you have a cute accent here and uh, other letters. And yeah, you just, uh, make sure that the text is uh, um, exactly the same. Uh, so I'm following this line, and I guess it it ends in the next line. So this one should be uh, considered as one paragraph. And yeah, you just go on with another paragraph. And yeah, this work can be very tedious. And think about it; it's only in latent script. So imagine with uh, yeah other scripts, it can be. Uh, quite uh, an effort and tedious work. So once you're finished with a uh, page, or even if you're not finished, you can always save the page in its current state uh, by going uh, down in the page and just publish the page here, the blue, blue button. Uh, so that's how you work on a page. So see uh, that we, can, we worked on this part. <laughs> so there's still, uh, many lines to work on. And uh, there's a discussion page uh, in the index, it's called Livre in French. And here you can usually, uh, yeah, just write a message about what you've done. So for example, uh, just for the demonstration, I'm gonna write something, um, work on page 90. Uh, hi, I actually worked on page 90, page 90 and I'm, Gonna put my name, name, yeah. and yeah, you can save it, and that's how you use the talk pages on the project. But I guess many of you already know how to use them. Um, so now I finish my demonstration, and we're gonna use uh, this uh, Etherpad uh, to actually, uh, yeah, work on this document. So please. Um, click on the link uh, that is on this etherpad, uh, pick a page as I've done, and then write the number of the page uh, just here. <laughs> and make sure that no one's actually used your page already. And if that's the case, let's go. We can start working on the document. So we're gonna edit French now? Yes, we're going to edit French Breton uh, because it's only Latin script. So I wanted to pick something not too difficult. Je ne parle pas, je ne parle pas le français. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, that the idea being that uh, even if you don't know the subtlety of the language, you can still work on the language uh, on some part of the language, at least. Um, you don't okay, need to cool. actually um, yeah, be proficient in the language. So yeah, I see that some people actually started picking a page. So yeah, feel free to pick a page. Uh, if you're not sure, you can always uh, ask a question on the Zoom or down below. Just... Yes, this is the, the link to the Etherpad AKC21 resource.
So I expect to see 29 names on this list. <laughs> Just going to put that on the right of my screen. So of course, don't uh, be afraid to make mistakes or uh, think too much, too much about the format because, um, of course, it has some uh, subtlety. This work there's sometimes two columns uh, that happens sometimes with some text. So um, feel free yeah, to, to choose the format you uh, think it fits. So. So how should I deal with the two columns? Should I make a table or should I? Uh, so know? yes, uh, when you think about columns, there's multiple technical ways to, to do this. Usually, uh, of course, um, it's uh, a discussion between the people who will work on uh, this work. Uh, of course, uh, as part of this exercise uh, during this Zoom session, uh, we'll just um, use a raw text and yeah. <laughs> because otherwise it will be complicated to explain uh, how to make table. Um, there's template for this, template to, to make two columns, three columns, uh, to change the shape of the text or the, yeah. But uh, here we're gonna do uh, just raw text uh, without columns. Normally you can think, what if I was the author of this text? Hmm. You are not the printer, the printer makes some decisions. Maybe the printer decides to make two columns, but it was not the author's intention. And then you can write just in one column if you are the author now. So, but it's a difficult situation and you would have to agree with the other volunteers who work on the other pages. So you yes. should go back and look at an existing page. How did they solve this? Because this is the people you need to agree with. Yes, exactly. There's lots of interaction between people working on one work. Um, for, for me, not speaking French or Breton, there is a, a question, should there always be a space before the question mark or not? Is this a French tradition? It's, yes, it's, it's also in German and English that I know, but uh, I have to adopt to the existing pattern that the other pages have used. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, the question of modernization of typography and, and norms uh, in general, uh, in, in, in that case of in French, yes, we do put a, a space before the <laughs> question mark and the exclamation mark. Um, and sometimes the scan doesn't, uh, doesn't the, the OCR doesn't detect it. Um, there's conventions usually uh, from the community. And yeah, you should always make sure that it fits uh, the community's uh, recommendation. And in that case, uh, we use a uh, modernize the typography. So yes, we do the space. Question marks. So I, I see this feature where if I click on a on a word uh, in the image, the uh, that corresponding word is selected. Is that a French wiki source thing? I'm not exactly sure yet because, yeah. um, is it? Yeah, it is. And we need to replicate it outside that. It's, it's not a good, it, it does not always work. So that's why we are waiting for years and years now. Oh, we want it to be perfect to share it, but it will never be perfect. I'm very yes. envious, that. I want this. Yes, that's what, that's why I asked. I, that's what my impression was. Yeah, and it works use... only if there's an OCR inside the PDF or Deja Vu file. Uh, okay. So that's, there's another trick. Okay. Uh, we are unable to... We don't okay. hear you. We are unable to hear, yes. 
you can type in the chat. And I'm not sure, is it Kevin or Kevin? The name? Something like that? My Irish Gaelic is not. It's pretty good, Nicholas. Thanks, Kate. I see there's a lot of comment in the chat, so. Uh, yeah, when we're really not sure what templates to use. Do you have like um, the template somewhere? No, but as Lars said, the content is more important than the, okay. the formatting itself. Don't, so don't bother, especially it's an exercise on your beginning. So don't take too, um, too much time on that. Uh, and I see that uh, Jose Jose says center, that could work, but as uh, Mayir is uh, saying just afterwards, there's a template for that, but that's a template for the English wiki source, Mayir, so it doesn't work on the French wiki source, but yeah, um, yeah, template for colon break, but that's not, uh, that's not very important here. Here, the more important is to be sure that, uh, the it's the correct letter that there's not a missing word or or error whatever in the content itself well i don't have a keyboard to type uh, the accents so you have a special character toolbar on top and okay. yeah this is um, okay i can just select of, one of course i've picked this work and this all these questions of course they well, they do happen and you know that uh, with Wikisource, <laughs> the question of keyboards, of inputs, of uh, convention on the work. And um, yeah, um, those are actually open questions. There's a lot of open questions here. And yeah, th those are all interesting questions indeed. Awesome. Yes, I, I, I am proofreading um, in another project this Russian Swedish dictionary, so I need to switch between Swedish and Russian keyboard. But it's an old uh, version of spelling, so I need to modify my online Russian keyboard to include the obsolete Russian letters. But I have done this, so now I can type in 19th century Russian on my Swedish keyboard. It's not so bad. <laughs> but uh, you are giving me a good idea. I can make uh, a Russian keyboard with uh, the old letters uh, so that it will be usable for everybody. So I have that would be a really easy thing to do. The alt graphic button, if I pr press that and E, then I get the yacht. So someone asked, they clicked on a page that has no text, what do they do next? Do you see an, ex an extract text button on top of the image? Maybe try clicking that. Oh yeah, yeah, sometimes this happens. Uh, the scan doesn't show up. So yeah, there's a button with image uh, here on top and you can always open it so that you have the, only the image and you can yeah, navigate on it. No, I think it's the OCR that failed on that one. Oh, the OCR failed. Yeah. So if it's um, yeah, if the OCR fails, well, I'm not sure if there's the button OCR. In the... No, there's a new one now. There's yeah. a new one now. Yes, <laughs> I'm not used it yet, um, but yes, there's a button. Extract the text. E extraire le text in French. But you can change the language interface if you want. You are proofreading French text, but you don't have to have a word interface in French. And of course, these questions um, makes you think about, yeah, hand script uh, manuscripts that don't have OCR layers and for language that are currently not supported by uh, OCR. So yeah, lots of uh, work to do on that too. Does it answer your question? Uh, who was it, Toshi? That's a workshop, so if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Not yet. Do we give them? 
um, you know, co-hosting privilege and maybe they can share the, their screen and we can guide them through it and maybe others can also learn. Yeah, we can, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Is, is it okay with you, uh, Toshi, if they give you um, rights to present your screen and then maybe we can help you through? Yes, I'm, I'm. I'm actually using my mobile phone. I've oh, been okay. able to. I've been able to open the um, page one thirty three. I can see um, the French text there in brown, and then mm -hmm. I'm kind of lost. I don't know where to go from there. I have the header. I don't know what to put as the header. Do I like? What do I do, please? That's where I'm kind of confused. Okay, is it something like this? Like what you see on? Yes. Oh, okay. So. Okay, in the header, you just type the, the page number, which is 134 in this case. Okay. And um, that will be all? Yes, that will be all in the header and in the, in the content, you just proofread whatever, the, whatever you've gotten from the OCR. You have some text there, right? Uh, below yes. in the column below. Okay, then yeah, you just yeah. need to proofread it. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Yes. One thing I think, uh, you know, one thing that uh, newbies struggle with is um, not, they're not sure whether they should keep the, uh, uh, whether they should put a page, uh, a line break after every line while it's a paragraph in the text. I think those, some distinctions like need to be made. Um, if it's poetry, then yes, you need a line break, but if it's a paragraph, you just write it in one go. I'm not sure. Is this poetry? Um, like... In this one, I think it is. I mean, it should uh, okay. have uh, line breaks. Okay, this is this is a poem. But yes, it's the yeah the limitation uh, the limits of the tool is that yeah you you actually have to have two line breaks so that it actually shows as two different lines, and yeah, there's always a question whether it's um, uh, a quote or a poem. Or mm. even if it's a theater, um, I mean, plays, there's mm. also that question of alignment of the text. Oh, yes. And yeah, that brings so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there is a template for this in the French wiki source. But what I would do, I wouldn't put uh, uh, two line breaks like this mm -hmm. at the end of every line. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't use the BR tag. I would put mm. the whole text into a poem tag. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, that 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 yes exactly like this. Uh, that that's my default solution. Uh, but maybe there's something even better in the French wiki source that I don't know. No, no, we are exactly right. We are using. Uh, in fact, this is my book, so you can do whatever you want. This is the book I I started, so I will proofread it. I see that some people ask, uh, is it proofread? Uh, don't worry. And I am using poem. Uh, this is the. The, the, page, uh, the page I proofread, it looks like uh, like a phrase book. Uh, like yeah. I, I could understand almost all the French phrases. I know enough French for that. I don't know any Breton. Uh, but yeah, I think I finished that one. It's 42. And uh, I, I, I just, I think all the letters are correct. All the, letter, all the letters and the words are probably correct. Uh, I didn't do any formatting, but uh, the lines look OK, I think. But yeah, it will need the proper column formatting. Also, this uh, like I don't know Breton at all, but uh, it looks like the orthography here is quite different from the modern orthography. Yes, it is. It's even for me speaking Breton. This book is a total nightmare. That's that's why you can totally try whatever you want. That's that's a good exercise, let's say. Yeah, that's uh, and that's actually uh, most of it is a phrase book indeed, just common phrase in French in 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 Southern Britain. So both the vocabulary and lexic is specific to Southern Britain and the orthography is very old and unfamiliar for modern Britain. So yeah, that's, don't worry. <laughs> that's, if you don't understand it, that's normal. <laughs> I never, learned, I never learned this language like at all. I, I, I do have a dictionary and the grammar at home, but that's because I'm a crazy collector of 
grammar books and dictionaries. Yeah. Can you hear me now by any chance? Yeah, yeah. go on. Oh, I jugg juggled microphones. Um, uh, one thing I was going to say, um, dictionaries are, a, I think, are a particularly useful thing to put into Wikisource. I've got a tool called Multidict, multidict.net, and it links to online dictionaries. And I found that you could link to page image dictionaries in web archive. And I did that. But of course, every time you go to a page, you need to expand it so you can read it. But uh, with Wikisource, and I found two good dictionaries, a Scottish Gaelic Entomological Dictionary and Victor Henri um, yep. written. And I've even made a few corrections in that. Um, the way that the tool works is um, if you create an index to the first word in every page, or better still, the last word in every page. And um, sometimes you have to do things with CHs and alphabetical order. But um, basically, it's just the first or, or the last word in every page. It might be useful if there was a tool that made that a bit easier. And then we could have lots of out of copyright online dictionaries. Linking to the wiki source, um, Victor Henri is far, far better than uh, what I was doing before, which was like link, linking to the um, web archive um, page image source. So it's uh, it could be very useful. Yeah, totally. Um, I'm giving the link to the Lexical Dictionary by Victor Henry in the chat because I worked on that one, yeah, indeed. That's a very old, but uh, actually it's quite modern uh, in the writing, so but still useful uh, nowadays. Yeah, and in, indeed, it could be more useful reused in other platform and anything. Uh, I, I'm working on that, but there's nothing yet, sadly. If you go to uh, multidict.net, you'll you'll find how I'll, a link to it. Multi, can you share the link? Multidict. Yeah. So we have another uh, issue in a way, like Satoshi try publishing a page and the page says, it still says that it's a, it has not yet been corrected. Yeah. Um, do you mean the, the red text uh, that says that yeah, the, the, the page has not been corrected? Yes, um, I so think that's yet, what I mean. That's part of yeah, the, the, the process of proofreading a page. Um, you need to an account to actually uh, mark the page as proofread, so in yellow. Um, if it's still in red, it just shows this uh, this phrase by default. Can you just sh show them how 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 to do that? Mm. Like once they've corrected, what mm. to do exactly? So if you've completed the page, uh, so you're in the this uh, stage, uh, you should go down uh, after the edit page uh, edit boxes, and you'll have here state of the page policy of the page. And then you can select here if it's a, a proofread in progress. Uh, it has been proofread at least once. In that case, you click on the yellow but radio button. And if you have any problem with the page, like some text uh, that you can't read, you can always use the blue one. Yeah, or the page is, let's say, half a page, or there's some text missing altogether, or there is an image on text and you're not sure how to do it, then you can select the blue one, problematic. Yes, exactly, because it's problematic. Does that answer your um, problem, Toshi? Perfect. Re Rebecca uh, had this question about Irish books that Amir has, I, but I think it's not. A is it a real question or more like a... Oh, that's a side discussion. That's that's OK. okay. That's just a silly question. Yeah. Oh, and okay. uh, it was if, if if Amir wanted any, I could always um, I always sort him out, send him over some of my old ones. Uh, OK. Yeah, I was <clears throat> the, the blink made me think later that it 
might be a bright dark we think or something. <laughs> Nearly everything Irish people say comes with a wink. Uh, Sadiq. <laughs> never, never <laughs> tis true. Tis true. Tis true. So when you have when you have an interesting book that you think could be digitized without any legal risk, but uh, it is from 1940 or 1950, and and the Commons uh, uploading rules will not accept it. Where where do you go when you can't put it on Wikisource? Yeah, that's thanks, Lars. That's a very good question. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's what I said uh, at the beginning, that copyright is not always easy. Um, on the French Wikisource, we decided not to take any risk and to follow and almost only use commands. So if commands doesn't accept a book, we don't use it on the French Wikisource. I know that some other Wikisource, uh, like the Polish Wikisource, for instance, put a lot of text in there. <laughs> On the Polish wiki, Polish text are not in the Polish wiki source for uh, copyright reason. They are in incubation Polish wiki source. There's things like that. There's different technique. Uh, that's that, there's no one answer for that. Uh, maybe Jim, you want to intervene on that? But is there a competing project that is less strict on copyright? will accept such books uh, not really because i know that uh, some people talked about internet archive in the uh, in the chat but i know that internet archive some that uh, try more or less to follow the same copyright rules and sometimes delete books if they are uh -huh. not uh, so copyright is copyright and as i say sometimes stupid alex said lex uh, the law is stupid, but it's still the law, so there's no magic solution for that. Uh, I, I still run, a wiki leave. Uh, I still run my own my own uh, project, Runeberg, partly because of this, because I can take some risks. Uh, so I showed this book on electric theory. It's from the 1940s, and it has multiple authors, and I'm not sure exactly if there is an author, so, so I digitized it. Um, but the book is more than 70 years old, but I think I should have, I should have done the same for many more books that are much younger, 30 and 40 years old, like home computer programming books. And because they have no commercial value, nobody would protest, everybody would thank me, but I would formally be breaking the law. Yeah. Yeah, and since on Wikisource, we are a collective, uh, it's not just you taking a risk, it could be everyone. Um, right. Yeah, f f not fun fact, but fun fact, the French wiki code, um, like 10 years, 15 years ago, was totally deleted because of some copyright problem. So some people respect the rules of copyright on wiki, French wiki code, some didn't. And because it was too hard in the end to know what was a copyright violation or not, they decided to just delete the whole French wiki code. Mm. It happened once, so that's a very specific case. Uh, but yeah, when you risk someone, uh, for yourself, you may risk for everyone. So yeah, copyright is mm. complicated and there's no... But does the uh, uh, National Library of France also respect copyright as strict? Yes. Or they try to at least because yeah, yeah copyright is not easy. Mm. So the so, National, National Library of Norway they digitized everything until the year two thousand. But then this is also in in an agreement with the authors association. Yeah. So the state, the government of Norway, pays a lot of money to the authors, and of course they have a lot of money. So. Yeah, it's, that's another solution. It's not available to people outside of Norway. So it's almost the end, Sadip. You want to yes. close, maybe? No, I just yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, share the same thing that we we have only four more minutes, and I uh, just wanted uh, any like 
we did not want to miss anyone who had any questions or, or, or any any comments. I did uh, see that Jim uh, tried to unmute, um, and maybe share something if, if Jim or anybody else. Any questions regarding each and everything that we talked today? Um, you have a couple of minutes. So. Yeah, I was just going to add on English wiki source that um, they do rarely upload a local copy if it's deleted on comments and they're pretty sure that it's public domain in the US. As, as you know, we have this uh, rule of it has to be public domain in the US and in the source country. So there's there's some finagling of the rules there. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. We have a, a comment in the chat. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Really glad that you liked the entire session. Any other final um, comments or questions? Anybody? Or we can close this. Antoine, maybe for... Now you can, now that you know Wikisource, you can do your own workshop Wikisource in your community. So exactly. So I just wanted to say, well, make sure that you press the save button at the end of the page. Make sure that the work you've done uh, will not be lost uh, to the save problem. Uh, and now, now indeed, yes, this is the final slide. Now that you've um, well uh, heard all the stories about the project in Balinese and in Bengali also, uh, on other Wikisource projects. Well, you can now organize your own workshop. The idea being that, well, you need to identify it first. You need to identify written resources because Wikisource is mainly on a written document. Uh, then you need to find copyright free scans uh, so that uh, you don't uh, have any problems with comments upload policies. Then you prepare the workshop by creating the index page with the list of all the pages, uh, making sure that, yeah, the author and the name, uh, there's no missing pages on the scan. Then um, I would suggest that you contact a volunteer group. Uh, it could be a group of speakers of the language and um, a group of um, yeah, institution, maybe uh, academics. And then you give uh, the same demonstration to the audience so that the loop is uh, closed. That's it for me. All right then. Thank you so much, everyone. It was yeah. I would I would say it was really good, even even though I was part of uh, the people who organizing this session. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending, and really looking forward to all the awesome work that you will do in your in 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 your communities. Yeah. Thanks. Bye bye. And oh yeah, um, thank you so much. To, to Bodhi from the Bengali community and Karma and Bayou uh, from Balinese community to come in here and share their experiences. I just would like to share one final thought. Um, Karma Chitravati was really nervous because it was her first time uh, participating and uh, presenting at a Wikimedia event. It's the first event and I just like to congratulate them that they, were, they did really awesome. And yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Really good session. Bye-bye.